Everyone knows the concept of temperature, but what does it measure exactly? Perhaps you learned in a chemistry course that it is related to the average kinetic energy such that it equals 3 halves K sub B times the temperature, where this is the kinetic energy and this is what's known as Boltzmann's constant. The temperature here is in Kelvin. But how is the temperature measured? Well, since that can't be done directly, some device must be used to measure a physical property of the substance. The one that we're most familiar with is the thermometer, and what that does is it measures the temperature in degrees. There are a number of different temperature scales that can be used, and the most familiar ones for us are probably degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to start with Celsius. So for degrees Celsius, we designate the freezing point to be equal to zero degrees C and we designate the boiling point to be equal to 100 degrees C. So this is at one atmosphere pressure, and therefore each degree, so one degree is one one hundredth of the distance between our freezing point and our boiling point. For Fahrenheit, though, our freezing point is equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and our boiling point is equal to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we divide this into each degree being 1 180th of the column in your thermometer, or the distance between those two points. So if you use these values, what you can see is we can relate this temperature interval such that 1 degree Celsius is equal to 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is what you use when you're looking for temperature intervals. So how do we relate this? In other words, how do we convert from a temperature that is Celsius to a temperature that is Fahrenheit? So both systems are linear because basically we've taken these two points, drawn a straight line between them and divided it into degrees. So We'll try here, so we're going to have a temperature that's in degrees Fahrenheit, and that's going to be equal to some A times a temperature in degrees Celsius plus B. So we're trying to relate, given a temperature in Celsius, what is its corresponding temperature in Fahrenheit. So we're going to need two conditions because we have two unknowns, A and B. And what are those conditions? The boiling point and the freezing point. So if we start here with the freezing point, we know that 32 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to this A, and now this is 0 degrees Celsius plus our B. Now let's do it for the boiling point. 212 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to A. Now in Celsius, the boiling point is 100 degrees C plus B. And so using these two equations, we can solve for A and B. So A is equal to 1.8 and B is equal to 32. Note, again, this is the conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So this is equal to 1.8 times whatever the temperature is in Celsius plus 32. 
Conversion for temperatures, not temperature intervals. This is what you use to convert from one interval or degree Celsius to the corresponding Fahrenheit. We also have absolute temperature scales. If you're using Celsius, you use Kelvin. And if you're using Fahrenheit, you use Rankine. These absolute temperature scales are such that absolute zero for both of these scales is zero. However, the size of the degree is the same. So one degree Celsius is equal to one Kelvin and one degree Fahrenheit is equal to one degree Rankine. So the intervals are exactly the same. So why do you need an absolute temperature scale? Let's consider using the ideal gas law to find a certain volume of gas. So our volume is going to be equal to N, the number of moles, times the gas constant, times the temperature, divided by pressure. What if the temperature is below freezing? Well, in Celsius or Fahrenheit, you could get a negative volume, which is impossible, but absolute temperature scales are never negative. So how do we relate the absolute temperature scales to Celsius and Rankine? So degrees Rankine is equal to degrees Fahrenheit plus 459.67. Note we don't say degrees Kelvin, we just say Kelvin is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So when you're adding or subtracting temperatures, you can use Celsius or Kelvin, Rankine or Fahrenheit, since one degree Celsius equals one Kelvin, etc. However, when you multiply, divide, raise to a power, take a log, etc., it is essential that you use the correct form of the temperature. So one example, as I showed you here, is the ideal gas law. So this is written in terms of absolute temperature so the volume or the number of moles, etc., is never negative. Or take a look at another example. If we use our expression here for the kinetic energy, if we put temperature in Celsius rather than in Kelvin, we're going to get a totally different answer, which would be incorrect. And one equation that you'll encounter later is Antoine's equation to find the vapor pressure or saturated pressure. And this is written that PSAT is equal to 10 to the A plus B over T plus C, where A, B, and C are constants that correspond to what substance you are, and temperature is in degrees Celsius. So you can see from this, if you use Kelvin instead, you're going to get a completely different answer.